The 6.5 is on the road here at Lenovo Tech World 2024 in Seattle. There have been some incredible announcements here. A lot of CEOs on stage personally and virtually supporting uh, what Lenovo is doing. Uh, one of the biggest announcements, uh, a pan industry announcement, is that AMD and Intel are coming together to extend the x86 platform. Dan, can you believe this? Isn't this great? Yeah, it's a big moment. The headlines are out there kind of calling, what is happening, you know? But this is a really important inflection, Pat, and I think this goes to show that there's a moment where architecturally things coming together to drive the future of the industry, it's important. And you can clearly see it when you've got these two companies, two companies, should we say who they are? Sure, sure. I think I already did, but we'll do it again. AMD and Intel, but it was more than that. Yeah. It was really the titans in the industry, it in was. software, uh, in platform. So why don't we dive in here? And you can guess it, we have AMD's Lisa Su and Intel's Pat Gelsinger. Welcome, two of you. You know, it's funny, uh, uh, sometimes you get that feeling when you were a kid, you see your uh, you see her teacher in the grocery store, like, oh my gosh, you you, you buy groceries too. And, <laughs> and like, like to have the two of you here is truly exceptional. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you, it's great to be here. <laughs> what a great analogy. Um, <laughs> so Pat, let's start off talking a little bit about what this means. Of course, there's the X86 side of this and, and that's really big. It's getting a ton of attention, but what about on the, on the software side, AVX, AMX extensions? T give us the extent of this collaboration. Yeah, and it really is bringing together, as you say, the titans of the ecosystem. Obviously, we're agreeing to facilitate this, but we're really looking with the ecosystem partners and particularly the software vendors. You know, to me, that's the most important piece of this because you know, essentially, why do you build hardware? To run software. So it's you know, agreeing on what the system interfaces, application interfaces need to be because often you know, we had differences between us that we're slowing, not accelerating the ecosystem. So it's really about how do we collaborate on the green, what the interfaces need to be at the system level, how we have operating system and system level support for that, but then also how it embodies itself into the application stack. You know, and for that, you know, things like AVX and AMX, it's not, not like one is good or bad, right? But it is saying, hmm, when we're not aligned, we don't accelerate people's ability to bring applications onto the x86 architecture and as the two companies that you know by far have been leading this over time us coming today together in this way and saying we're seeking the input of the ecosystem to help guide that evolution yeah that's a big deal yeah it's interesting uh i obviously interact with all of your ecosystem and of course i didn't talk to them before this but uh, what they've told me in the past uh this is a big step forward here but i have to at lisa like What's the genesis of, of, of this collaboration? How did it start? You know, you and, and Pat, your companies were working kind of across your partners uh, at some point, but, but how did it start? Well, uh, let me just add to some of the things Pat said. Look, this is a really important day for the ecosystem, and it really is about the ecosystem. You know, what we are, we have a shared goal, which is to get, um, you know, the best compute out there and to do it in the uh, you know, most effective you know, way possible. Uh, when you think about x86, it really is you know, the architecture of the last 40 plus years in terms of where all compute innovation has happened. And you know, what we're really trying to do here is, is really bring the ecosystem together where uh, we have an opportunity to, to kind of accelerate the pace. Right. So you know, back to um, you know, how this happened. So you know, you know, Pat and I you know, do see each other from time to time <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> at various um, you know, industry events. And, and the truth is you know, we hear a lot from customers that um, they appreciate x86, they, they appreciate all of the, the technology, uh, but boy, you know, could AMD and Intel make it easier for them. Yeah. So I, I think that that is a, um, a foundation of it, and then you know we brought some of our teams together. It started actually with our CTOs, you know, uh, you know Greg uh, Lavender, Mark Papermaster, and some of our technical team. And what we found is, you know, there's really a deep respect yes. you know, between these teams. I mean, yes, you know, we compete, but these are two of the best, you know, processor teams in the industry. And um, at the end of the day, we want to get innovation out there as yes. fast as possible. So. Uh, it, it was a very natural thing. I think this is the right moment, just given everything that's happening in you know, infrastructure and AI, uh, for us to bring, bring the, the, uh, the ecosystem together. No, I appreciate I say, that. You know, it felt a little surreal. 
right? Because, you know, hey, you know, I've been a firsthand, uh, uh, you know, witness to, you know, some of these, uh, you know, debates and squabbles and lawsuits and so on, right? You know, the uh, deeply held different opinions in the industry. So when I was in Lisa's boardroom and when she was in our boardroom, it was sort of like, wow, I never thought I was going to be here. But as Lisa said, it's the right thing for the industry. It's the right thing for the ecosystem and unleashing more energy around the X86 uh, ecosystem. That's a shared objective. And one, when you have a shared goal, a shared vision, okay, now you can look, pa look past the past and look forward together to the future. Yeah, I have to share with you, I mean, when your teams messaged me for the first time, I mean, you know, I was Intel's biggest customer, and I worked at AMD. So, you know, the the two, and, and I've covered you two for thirteen, going on fourteen years now in my company. And yeah, it was uh, it was it, it was quite quite an event. And, and I I knew there was collaboration going on across with engineers. Engineers seem to get along better. Uh, but in the end, right, trying to um, give the customers what they want. Now it's now it's official. Right, it's 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 direct access. So, again, I just think this is a, a huge step forward for for x86 and your customers. You know, Pat. So often we talk about you know, on our shows and with guests about how you know competition is great for the market. Yeah. But collaboration can be great for the market too. And I think that's this is one of those cases where they can continue to compete fiercely, and I expect that you yeah. will. But you can also collaborate in a way that drives a ton of value to customers, expanding the market. And Lisa. You know, you, you know, you mentioned that you know expanding the market. You talked about it in the release. You know, and what does that mean? Because you know, you dominate in so many parts of the market already. Um, is it about embedded? Is it mobile? Where does this go? Well, look, I, I think this is really about all of the above, right? I mean, the idea is uh, x86 is uh, you know sort. You know, when you look at x86 and you look at our customer set and you look at the applications, yes, we are everywhere today. But you know the market is moving very fast right now. There's a tremendous amount of innovation, whether you call it architectural innovation, implementation innovation, on the software side, on the application side. And with all of that, um, the purpose of this you know, advisory group is to really allow our customers, our partners, and frankly, you know, our, our, um, our, our teams to move faster. And really, our focus is uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to differentiate. I mean, if you look at just the spectrum of compute that you require, um, it, across all these applications, but there are some places where, uh, if you know, the, we work with the advisor group together and uh, agree, we will actually move the ecosystem faster, and that's what this is about. That's how we expand the market, frankly, yeah. is uh, by getting more innovation out faster. No, that's great. So, uh, questions always come down to timing. Like, so I'm, I'm curious. And we'll start with you, Pat. When would we expect to see the first fruits of of the labor here? Well, I think in some ways you already are, right? Because I think just sending this message to the ecosystem, I think people will all of a sudden pause and say, huh, can I go partner with them, right? Can I go look at the x86 through a more forward-looking lens than I had before? And we're already having those conversations, right? You know, with some of the cloud guys, and sort of saying, hmm, right? So I can influence this and think about you know, how I shape the x86, you know, and whether that's at the application level, whether that's at, you know, custom product levels, whether that's at the chipset level, you know, uh, chiplet level, whether that's, you know, new use cases. So I believe that, you know, today you already will start seeing that difference of ecosystem energy being unleashed. You know, that's it. We're going to get underway. You know, we'll have the uh, first advisory group meeting. And I'd also emphasize when you have people like uh, Tim and Linus in the room, Right, you know, you have technical heavyweights. Sure. I mean, as I'm, you know, as I'm talking to Linus. Very outspoken. And, very outspoken. <laughs> yeah. And they don't waste their time. Right. Right. In that regard, you know, they're going to expect results. They're going to expect influence, or they're not going to spend their time on this. Right. Right. So, you know, these are impatient heavyweight folks. You know, and you look across the other companies that are participating in it. You know, they're putting their best people on it. You know, we raise the bar pretty high. And I said, you know, you you have to sit in the same room with Tim and Linus. Yeah. So don't send people that can't sit in the same room with them and have good technical conversations. Right. You know, these are quality individuals that you know have invested enormous amounts of energy around the x86 ecosystem and have huge amounts of their own technical credibility associated with that, but they're business as well. 
So they're looking for results and we have to you know, show up. And then of course we're gonna go compete viciously for who's the best at implementing <laughs> right. that guidance. You know, I, I just want to add to uh, what Pat said, though. You know, the, the other thing that was true is as, as we came up with this idea and reached out to the partners, um, every single one was super energized by this. So the idea of bringing you know, these, these people together, you know, basically the, the best of the best in terms of architectural minds to define where x86 goes next, I think uh, really resonated with all of our founding members. Yeah. How do you envision the future of x86? Well, again, I mean, maybe I'll start, Pat, and, and you can add. Look, I, I think what we have here is um, the x86 architecture has, you know, again, evolved over the last you know, number of decades to really be uh, you know, the best architecture for high-performance compute. Now we think about AI, we think about you know, efficiency, all of these aspects of it. And you know, the, the key for us is to keep attacking the problems of tomorrow. Right? At the end of the day, we're looking at you know, where does the architecture need to evolve to really scale from you know, cloud to enterprise to edge to client to mobile to auto across all of those uh, spectrums. Right. And um, so you know, this is an opportunity for us to evolve. Now, the beauty of x86 is uh, you know, the fact that because of its long history, uh, many of the tra traditional compute applications um, you know, have really come to rely on that, uh, that capability. But yes, you know, we're looking at where x86 is going to go over the next 40 years. Yeah, and you know, just just maybe a couple of uh, more concrete examples to put against that, right? I mean, obviously, you know, GPUs and accelerators are super important for AI workloads, but almost all of the data databases, embeddings, RAG use cases are running on the x86. Okay, how do you tie those things together? Right, right, because you know, people aren't going to port their 30-year-old databases just to take advantage of an accelerator and move all of that code over. How do you stitch those two together? hey, that's a pretty important topic for us to figure out of how we extend the x86, not just the native instructions, you know, like AVX and AMX, but also, you know, how do you extend memory spaces? How do you, you know, have coherent memory access from the CPU to the GPU? Super important topic. You know, security model. You know, I started working on uh, security in the underlying uh, platform with TPX 25 years ago. The amount of deployed confidential computing today is pitiful. Right, the recent CrowdStrike uh, issue. Hey, you know that should have been resolved in minutes, not weeks or months. Right, uh, associated with it, we can do much better. Right, you know at at uh, that. You know, when you think about uh, new segments, you know, automotive. Right, you know, a car is a computer with tires. Right today, okay, we have the best computing architecture that runs more of software forever. Right, you know, so how do we, you know, sort of standardize and just make that, you know, an extension of the x86 uh, platform? You know, when you think about the legacy of the x86, um, you know, you, you go into these environments and people say, well, I run all of my test instrumentation and validation environment on x86, even for non x86 sure. environments. Why? You know, because it's been built over the last two to three decades. Why would I ever replace it? Right, you know, if it works and is functional. So I think the long tail being able to be brought forward is a super powerful asset of the ecosystem as well. So as we bring this conversation to a, to a bit of a close here, I have to ask this, right? The people that are out there, they're gonna watch, they're gonna say, okay, is this publicity? What's going on? You know, you've got the two of you, very convincing, of course, but how will this collaboration, you know, continue to, to be found in the wild? And maybe Lisa, why should those that maybe are a little skeptical feel that this announcement has legs, is real, and that you're very committed to this? Well, I think you can just you know, take a look at, um, it's not just AMD and Intel, it's really you know, all of the you know, giants of the industry around you know, computing today. And you know, we have a common goal. The common goal is to move the industry forward. And for that reason, uh, you know, I think this advisory group is actually, it's, it's exactly the right time to bring something like this out. Um, it's an opportunity for us to move the industry faster. It's an opportunity for, um, you know, really uh, what hasn't existed before, which is, you know, for, uh, you know, frankly, the, the industry ecosystem to give us, uh, you know, really, you know, very clear feedback on, on what's needed. And, you know, let me just uh, say, you know, uh, you know, Dan, one of the things I say is, like, we're not necessarily, like, don't think of this as an x86 you know, thing. This is really a you know computing industry thing. What are we doing to move the industry forward? And um, you know that, that's why today's a, a very important day. 
And you know, this is uh, uh, also measured by the intellectual horsepower. You know, that's part of the advisory group as well. And I would just say, you know, look at look at the names that are part of this. Okay, they care. They wouldn't waste their time. They're pretty intent on this, and they're building on the investment that many of them have for decades. And you know, here we are at Lenovo World as we're having this uh, conversation. They built their entire company on the x86, and that's the case for many of the companies that are participating. So, you know, they're they're not going to you know suffer their time you know randomly. They're investing to make a big impact as a result of the tremendous legacy that we have, the most powerful software ecosystem that's ever been built on Earth, and now we're committed to together to extend it. And, and a great reminder from both of you about the ecosystem. It's not just Intel and AMD, yeah. but a number of partners, founders, advisors being involved. And for everyone out there that wants to learn more, check out Pat's, uh, Pat wrote a great Forbes article published this morning, dives deep into this. Pat, Lisa, Thank you both so much for taking the time, for making this happen, and for allowing us to be part of this uh, historic moment. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you Thanks. for tuning in, being part of the 6.5 community. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our content here, and of course, across the technology space. But for Patrick, myself, we got to say goodbye for now. We'll see you all later.